Well, good morning and welcome on this, the first Sunday in Lent. Lent's one of those seasons that pushes us to the edges, that invites us to push beyond the boundaries of our own comfort zones into a more radical kind of discipleship. And of course, it's also that season where we remember Jesus quite literally going to the edges as he goes to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. But particularly this year, it's also an occasion for us to stand in, in prayerful solidarity with our sisters and our brothers in the Ukraine. So let's go and join our service. Well, good morning and welcome. And very warm welcome too to those of us, those who are joining us uh, online this morning. As we've just heard, today is of course the first Sunday in the season of Lent. It's a season of self-denial, season of repentance, a season of renewal as we journey together towards that hope of resurrection life at Easter. But as we've already heard, this is also an occasion where our thoughts are very much with the, uh, with the people of Ukraine. And last week we lit a candle um, as we prayed for them, and we will keep that, that candle burning in our services for, for Ukraine. And so just as we begin, uh, a prayer uh, by the Bishop of Oxford for the people of Ukraine. So let's pray. God of compassion, have mercy this day on the people of Ukraine. Restore to them the gift of peace. Grant wisdom to the world's governments. Bring good in the midst of evil and suffering. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your son, who gave his life to bring peace to your world. Amen. And so we sing that well-known Lenten hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights. And so we stand to sing. <clears throat>
So grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. In standing as we pray together, Almighty God, you bring light, things hidden in darkness, and know the shadows of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your Spirit, that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Do please sit. So we come to our confession. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our sins in penitence and faith. So just a moment of quiet before we confess together. And so we pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So may the Father of all mercy cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the collect for today. Heavenly Father, your son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so our Old Testament reading uh, is read to us by Sue, by Roz. The reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. When you have entered the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land that the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians ill-treated us and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labour. When we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, 
the Lord heard our, our voice and saw our misery, toil and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Roz. Uh, Our gospel reading is read for us by Peter, and it will be on the screen. Uh, The gospel reading is from Luke, beginning at verse, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. At the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. He said to him, I will give you all your all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. I think one of the things that's really struck me over this past week or so with the unfolding horror in Ukraine is the way in which Ukrainians have spoken about their sense of identity and their love for their country. There is an absolute certainty and clarity. I am Ukrainian. This is our home. This is our land. I have to defend my country. There's a real sense that they know who they are. And we look on as we hear them speak perhaps in that mixture of admiration, but also of despair, that we can't provide the protection that they need. And we fear for many of the lives of the people that we have heard speaking. As I wrote, typed those words, in my mind I said the words, Lord, have mercy. And I suddenly thought, you know, as I hear the voices from Ukraine, as I see people on my screen, whether they're from Ukraine or whether they have managed to get to safety, I will never know the end of their stories, but I can pray. And for each person that I hear speak, I will say quietly in prayer, Lord, have mercy because it seems to me has always seemed to me that prayer is a gift 
but also there is power in prayer because of who we're praying to. So when I see those faces and I hear those voices, Lord, have mercy. The first reading that Ros read shows us how the Old Testament Jews were taught to remember who they were. Remember who they were and what God had done for them by bringing them out of Egypt to Canaan. A summary of that reading, my father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt. There he became a great nation, powerful and numerous. And when the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, we cried to the Lord. The Lord heard our cry and saw our misery. He brought us out of Egypt, bringing us into this land. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. For me, that, that passage speaks of a God who cares, who hears, who sees, who acts, and who provides. It speaks to me of a God of faithfulness, who calls his people and does not abandon them. We may need to hold on to that as we pray for the people of Ukraine and continue to remember the people of Afghanistan. And we see how the Jews responded to that extraordinary love and commitment of God to his people by bringing the first fruits of the soil, their first harvest of the land of milk and honey which God had led, it to them, had led them to and provided them with. A reminder to them as they brought that first fruits of who they are and what God has done for them. And I wondered, as I read that passage, how often do we pause to remember who we are in God's eyes? To recall what God has done for us and then how do we respond what is the offering that we bring that demonstrates our thanks and with Jesus is there not a constant reminder of who he is and who has sent him and on whom he depends and worships and the scriptures that feed him this first Sunday in Lent, with our Gospel reading from Luke, Jesus almost still dripping from his baptism, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He wasn't abandoned, but led out into the wilderness, just as the Jews were for so long, years before. At his baptism, Jesus had heard the one voice that matters, the voice of his father. This is my son, whom I love. Jesus' identity confirmed and affirmed. But now, out in the wilderness, there are other voices that come in and seek to tempt him. To tempt him from being and acting as God's beloved son, to turn away from that. In the wilderness, Jesus was maybe faced with questions of himself. Who am I? Who am I called to be, to do? How will I do it? And in the wilderness, the devil tries to seduce Jesus by reminding him who he is and what he's capable of, of the power that Jesus has. If you're the son of God, if you are who you say you are, then you can do anything. You don't have to be hungry. 
You can tell these stones to become bread. He takes him to a high place, shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil claims falsely that they're his. And that if Jesus just worships him, bows down, he can have them all with all the accompanying power and splendor. As if power, control, is the most important thing of all. To have power over others. Power over the world. And these temptations act as distractions from worshipping, from trusting the true God. But Jesus knew who he was. He knew who his father was. And he knew this wasn't the way. And so in his responses, each time he turns the focus away from himself, the Son of God, and points to the Father and to the way of the Father. But the choice was still there. The choice was still there, as it is for us all. And so having failed, Luke says that the devil departs until an opportune time. In Matthew's account, the angels come and minister to Jesus. There's something very comforting about that image, that picture. But Luke's ending of the account, until an opportune time, to me, sounds more menacing. And we know with hindsight that this opportune time will be in the garden of Gethsemane as Jesus is betrayed that it will result in Jesus being on a cross not a temple in a place where he thirsts and where the world turns its back on him for Jesus knowing loving, worshipping, the one that he knew as father, trusting in him was the only way. There was no detour, there was no easy way out. He knew who he was and he was willing to suffer, to go all the way to the cross, to stand up for who? He was. And as we begin our Lenten journey, we follow Jesus on that road that will lead to the cross and also to the hope of resurrection. And I hope that each of us, led by God's Spirit, will, whatever our circumstances, at this time grow in our knowledge in our love and in our trust of the one who beckons us to follow him and along that way hold our sisters and brothers enduring great trauma and suffering before our father lord have mercy Amen. Thank you, Anita. So we come to affirm our faith together, as we say. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth are named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
In a moment, Sheila's going to lead us in our prayers. Sheila, I wonder if you could bring the pebble pool forward at the same time. Would that be, would that be okay? So let's pray. Father, we thank you for that assurance that as we cry out to you, Lord, have mercy, that you hear our prayer. And so as we bring before you these, these pebbles that represent the prayers of different people, we pray that in your mercy you will hear our prayers. In Christ's name, amen. Firstly, a prayer for the Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine who are suffering the horrors and depravity of war. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And Lord, we're aware that there are many people suffering elsewhere in the world. We pray for those refugees who are fleeing. Lord, that you would watch over them and guide them to a safe place. And Lord, we ask that you help us to count our blessings here in this country. We have so many things day by day to count our blessings for. So help us to do that, Lord, as we think of the suffering of so many. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Creator God, as we look around us at this time of year and see new life of vibrant colours appearing in our gardens and we hear the excited twittering of the birds as they prepare to make their nests and soon we will see the lambs gambling in the fields. Springtime and Lent a time for us to come before our God in a penitential way, a time for praying, fasting and self-denial, a time for us to let God spring clean our lives. So help us, Lord, to be willing to let you have your way in us. Lord, will you help us through these weeks of Lent to focus our hearts and minds more on you and as we draw closer to you, will you guide us in how we pray? There are so many people and situations that concern us, and we need to be directed by your Holy Spirit to pray aright for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you resisted the temptations that the devil set before you in the desert. Will you give us the strength in our daily lives to persevere with the things that we are denying ourselves as a Lenten discipline? When we feel ourselves weakening, help us to look to you for your refreshment, renewal and revival. And as we receive from you, may your light shine more brightly from us, enabling us to share your love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for the church here in Banbury and throughout the world. Will you equip and empower all who serve you? Fill them afresh with your Holy Spirit. Guide and direct them in how they share the love of Jesus to your people. 
And Lord, we ask that you will increase our faith and trust in you so that we can pray in faith, believing that your healing power can touch the lives of those we bring before you now who need to know your healing in body, mind or spirit. Praying for Will, Anna, Jade and Janet. And in a moment of quiet, for us each to pray for the people laid upon our hearts. We pray also for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially the families and friends of Chris Hedges, Stuart Gale, Ted Bryant, Len Hudson, Judith and Fred. May they know your comfort and presence in their sadness. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sheila. And so we come to the peace, which seems to be a, something very much on our hearts and on our minds at the moment as we hold before God the peace of the world, and yet we also seek to share that peace with one another. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet one another with that sign of peace. Greetings too to those uh, joining us from home. Peace be with you too. So in obedience to our Lord's command, we take this bread and this cup. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. His blood is shed for all. And so as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. And so with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
in times of hope, in times of trouble, in times of sorrow, and in times of joy, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. of Christ keep you in eternal life. I'll grip the body of Christ keep you in eternal life.
And so we pray together. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up the cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So we finish with that wonderful hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Please stand as we sing.